So we have a solution here, and in this solution, we see that we have NH3, nitrogen with three things connected, is a base, and it's a weak base at that. So if you were to add a proton, it ended up being with NH4+, plus, that's the cation of this salt, this would be its conjugate acid. So we have got a solution that contains a weak base and its conjugate acid, so we have got what we call a buffer. And anytime we want to calculate the pH of a buffer, we should use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. pH equals pKa plus the log of the concentration of base over the concentration of acid. Now students sometimes want to do something different if we've got a base buffer rather than an acid buffer, but we still use exactly this equation. So if we're wanting to get the pH, we need the pKa. I see here that they gave me the pKb. So how do we get the pKa from the pKb? I mean, from, I'm sorry, they gave me the Kb and I'll need the Ka so I can get the pKa. So how do I get the Ka? We know that the Ka is Kw divided by Kb. Kw is 1 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. And that will give me 9.55, it just keeps going on, times 10 to the minus um, 10. There's the Ka. So now we're ready to calculate the pH. pH is pKa, that would be the negative log of that 9.55 times 10 to the minus 10, plus the log. Now which one was the base? The base was the NH3, and it's 0 0.10 divided by 0 0.15. Those are the concentrations. And that'll give me a pH equal to 9.255, carrying a little bit extra sig figs along for the ride, plus a negative 0 0.176. And this will give me a pH of 9.08. Now just a little quick word about this. The pH of 9.255 is basic, and typically, if you're making a buffer from a base and its conjugate acid, it's going to have a pH in the base range. That's typical. Um, this would be the pH, the 9.255, would be the pH if we had equal amounts of these two components because the log of 1 is equal to 0. Remember, the second term, term kind of fine-tunes it up or down. In this case, it's fine-tuning it down, and let's see if that makes sense. Which do we have more of, the base or the acid? Oops, we have sorry. more of the acid, so we'd expect it to come down a little bit, and so we'd have a pH of 9.08. Let's stop there, but the next two videos I'm going to create will be adding an acid to this buffer and seeing how it changes the pH, and then adding a base to this buffer and seeing how it affects the pH. So I produced a video where we calculated the pH of this buffer that contained a weak base and its conjugate acid salt. But now we're going to go and have it do what buffers do, and that is resist change to pH when you add either an acid or a base. When I look at this HNO3, I know that HNO3 is a strong acid. And we're adding this strong acid to the buffer. The hard part about doing these problems is to write this first reaction. We have to write that acid being neutralized by the buffer. Now when I come across a strong acid, it really does not exist in solution as HNO3. It 100% ionizes, and I always write H3O plus for my strong acids. And then I have to decide what portion of that buffer is going to be neutralized or is going to neutralize that acid. So we have here NH3, and we have here NH4. Which of those is a base? Bases neutralize acids. Well, the base is NH3. So this is what is going to neutralize that added acid. It is a one-way reaction because the strong acid pushes it to completion. And that will give me, when I swap the H plus from the acid to the base, that will turn the base into NH4 plus, and it'll turn the acid into H2O.
examine that and see how that is true as we switch where that H plus is located. Now, with a one-way reaction, I call it an ICF table. We go it to completion, not to an equilibrium. It's a way of doing limiting reactant problems, and I will put moles into my table. So I don't need to know moles of each one of these components. Well, I was already told the moles of the strong acid. So it's 0 0.0025 moles. In terms of the ammonia, I am going to need to take the molarity of the ammonia, which is 0 0.10 moles per liter, and multiply by how many liters of this buffer I have. Well, if it's 100 milliliters, that is 0.1 liter, and that is going to give me, for the ammonia, 0 0.0010 as the, uh-oh, that's not right, point I got too many zeros in there. Let me erase that, sorry. All right, let's try this. We have got 0.1 times 0.1 is 0.01. That's more like it. Now we need to realize that this is not a zero under the NH4. We have some NH4 before this reaction ever has an opportunity to take place. So for the NH4, what we're going to do is we're going to take the molarity of the NH4, which is 0.15 molar, or moles per liter, and again, multiply by the 0.1 liters. There's 100 milliliters of the buffer. It contains both of these two solutions in it. So I have 0.015 moles. So that's gonna go here and I don't care about the water. Now I'm gonna subtract until the smallest quantity gets consumed, which is the added acid. We are neutralizing all of that acid with the same amount of the base. And I'm going to produce on this side 0 0.0025. That's going to consume all the added acid. So it has neutralized that added acid and that's why it resists change to pH. That will drop the ammonia down a bit to 0 0.0075. It will raise the ammonium up a little bit to 0 0.0175. And that is the F line. Now, when I examine this F line, I see that I have a solution that contains a weak base and its conjugate acid in solution. This is still a buffer. And as such, we can use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. pH equals pKa plus the log. And you can do it in terms of moles, number of moles of base over number of moles of acid. Now, in the previous video, we calculated the pKa. Where'd it go? And that was equal to, ignore my dog. Nikki, no. Sorry, I had to stop my dog from barking at me. <laughs> she needed her bone. Okay, so pKa, we calculated the previous problem as 9.255 extra sig figs along for the ride. So that would be plus the log, and we have to find the base. The base is the NH3, so 0 0.0075 over the acid 0 0.0175. That is going to give me a pH um, equal to, oh, let's see. That would be 9.255 plus a negative 0 0.368. Okay, and that is 8.89. If we compare this to just the buffer, just the buffer was 9.08. So it did bring it down a little bit. It makes sense that it would bring it down because we added an acid to it. So if it's going to go any direction, it should go down, but it shouldn't go down by very much, and it didn't. It went down, um, you know, less than less than two pH, uh, 0.2 pH units. So that is how to calculate a buffer's pH after you add a strong acid to it. So we've seen a calculation where we determine the pH of just this buffer and we discovered that it was equal to 
I flipped my paper over here, 9.08. And then we saw how the pH changed when we added a strong acid. Now we're ready to add the barium hydroxide, which is a strong base. Now as a strong base, um, it 100% ionizes to produce OH minus ions. And whenever I'm working with a strong base, that is always how I will write the strong base in my chemical reaction. Then I will have to look at my buffer and decide what component of this buffer is going to neutralize that base. Well, we established that NH3 was the base of the buffer and NH4 plus is the acid of the buffer. So we certainly would neutralize it with the acid. And then it's a one-way reaction because the base is strong, pushes it to completion, and we swap the H plus, the proton, from the acid to the base. When it comes off the acid, it becomes NH3. When it goes to the base, the base becomes water, and thus we have neutralized the base. Because it's a one-way reaction, I will do what I call an ICF table going to completion, to the final, not to equilibrium. We plug moles into the equation because this is a way to do a limiting reactant problem. Now let me free up a little space here to do the calculations that I need in order to put stuff into the table. I need the hydroxide concentration. Well, my source of hydroxide concentration is barium hydroxide. Notice that there are two hydroxides for every one barium hydroxide. It's already in moles. So the moles of, and I'm gonna do it stoichiometry, the moles of barium hydroxide is what I'm given. I don't want moles of barium hydroxide. I need to place into my table moles of just hydroxide, and I see that there are two moles of hydroxide in every one mole of barium hydroxide. Now, this is not necessarily something that you would have to write out to understand, but I wanted to show you the stoichiometry. We have 0 0.0050 as the moles of hydroxide. Now, the moles of the ammonium and the moles of the ammonia I get from the information of the concentration as well as the volume. We know that molarity, 0 0.10 moles per liter times a volume of 0.1 liter is going to give me 0 0.0100 moles, and that's of the ammonia. I did it first for some reason, so it's 0.0100, I don't care about the water. And the ammonia, I mean the ammonium that I need to do, the NH4 plus, is 0.15 times the 0.1 or 0.015. So now I have the moles of everything. The reaction proceeds to consume the smallest quantity. So it is going to consume all of this and then we'll have to stop and produce on this side. That has used up all of the added strong base. It has neutralized it. It drops my ammonium down to 0 0.010. It increases my ammonia up to uh, 0 0.015. Now I look and I see that I still have the components of a buffer because I still have a weak base and its conjugate acid present. So pH is equal to the pKa plus the log of the number of moles of base over the number of moles of acid. The pKa we know is 9.255, I'm taking an extra significant figure along for the ride, plus the log of the moles of the base, remember NH3 is the base, so it's 0 0.015 divided by 0 0.010. So we have got um, 9.255 plus 0 0.176, and this is going to give me 9.43. So we see that the addition of the base brought the pH up. Remember, the pH of just the buffer alone without the added base was 9.08 and we have brought it up to 9.43. It should go up because we added a base, but it doesn't go up by much. 
It is resisting change to pH.